Hi there, I'm Tim, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about the bassoon. So the bassoon is a double reed instrument, um, and let me just show you the reed. Uh, so this is the reed right here. You can see the blade uh, and then the opening. Um, so this is what generally makes all the vibrations. Uh, that's where we blow through, and on this end, that'll be connected to the vocal. So here, let me give you a little demonstration on what that sounds like alone off of the bassoon. It's not very cute, no. So dating all the way back to the Renaissance period is an instrument called the dulcian, and this is an early ancestor of the bassoon, um, probably I would say uh, its earliest. Um, this is one where they took one, uh, one piece of wood and they bored two holes down it um, and ended up connecting them with a little U at the bottom. Here, let me show you that really quick. So on a modern bassoon, this is kind of what that U looks like. Now this is made out of brass, but before in the Renaissance, it was actually just made out of wood. So sound would come through this side, go all the way down through the U and go out the bottom, effectively getting you twice the range uh, or twice the length of wood that you're using. The dulcian had uh, various different um, sizes or ranges. So there was one that was a soprano dulcian, one was a tenor dulcian, but the most common and most frequently used was a bass dulcian. Now this instrument had a very vocal quality to its sound, um, so it was used a lot in cathedrals and it would uh, double the basses in the choir. Probably one of the main differences between the dulcian and the bassoon today. One, its length um, to the modern bassoon is broken up into sections so it can pack easier. Uh, and three, the amount of key work on it. There was almost no key work on the dulcian. There were just holes drilled in where the, uh, the tone holes were. So jumping forward, we're gonna look at the Baroque bassoon. Now there's been a little bit more key work added and it's also been split up into the sections so it can pack easier. The other thing about Baroque bassoon is that they lengthened the whole instrument, so now it can play a little bit lower. Moving on to, into classical and modern times, uh, we continue adding more key work, these notes are getting more stable, the timbre is more even throughout the registers, uh, and it's just generally easier to play than the, uh, the older instruments. Now the bassoon is a little bit hard to show on camera, but I'm gonna try my best. So we start out right here. This is our reed. This is basically the mouthpiece of the instrument. The sound goes all the way through the crook, which is this metal piece here, um, down into the tenor joint or the wing joint. And then it travels all the way down to the boot joint, comes back around through that U-tube, uh, going all the way into the long joint or bass joint, and then it co finally comes out of the bell right there. So the modern bassoon today, uh, there are kind of two main uh, um, versions of bassoon, if you will. Um, there's the French model, and there's a German model of bassoon. So the German model is the one that we most commonly see in the Western orchestra, um, because it has a darker tone and just generally plays, uh, it blends a little bit better into the orchestral sound. So I'm gonna put on my, my um, neck strap or harness and we're going to uh, hear this played a little bit. All right, now that I'm all strapped in, ready to go, um, I'm gonna uh, go over the range really quick. The range of this instrument goes from uh, the B flat below the, uh, the bass clef staff and um, goes up to uh, the E above the treble clef staff. So that's a pretty impressive range of about three and a half octaves. And I'll just play a little bit of that uh, just so you can get a general sense of the range of the instrument. So when thinking about uh, orchestral music, uh, generally, the second bassoon is playing lower, maybe in the, uh, the, the middle of the bass clef area, and then the, the first bassoon is playing above the bass clef staff. 
some cases of this uh, you might hear in like Stravinsky's Rite of Spring, uh, the opening starts quite high in bassoon. Let me play a little bit of that for you. Now, going back to the idea of the dolchin being a very vocal instrument, um, that actually translate, translates over into the bassoon. So I'm just going to play uh, Tchaikovsky's Symphony 4, the end of the second movement. you an idea of uh, the vocal quality that this instrument has. So along with that uh, vocal quality, we also have uh, a big excerpt, which is uh, Scheherazade, the second movement opening. Um, this one is pretty much just bassoon alone. Um, it's got some strings underneath it, but uh, this is supposed to be kind of like a dance. <laughs> Shostakovich 9, the fourth movement, cadenza. Again, it's got that very nice vocal quality. So even in that same symphony, just a few bars later, um, the character changes completely into kind of a light and bouncy march feeling. <laughs> first times that I actually heard bassoon was in Fantasia, uh, The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Um, and this goes along with the, um, the mysterious quality that the, the bassoon generally has, and also light and bouncy. 
Another one that you might hear a lot of bassoonists practicing in the practice room is the uh, Mozart Marriage of Figaro Overture. This is doubled with the string instruments and it goes quite fast. <laughs> So, all of the excerpts out of the way, let's talk a little bit about the uh, extended technique of bassoon. So, bassoon is able to do um, some multiphonics, uh, and this is just um, uh, different notes. It, it basically plays two harmonics at the same time, um, basically using some funky fingerings that we have to do. So, let me uh, demonstrate a couple of those for you. <laughs> also bend the pitch so if you wanted to do glisses or something like that you could do this uh, but it really only jumps maybe a whole step at a time so that's just using the embouchure to um, lower the pitch and then raise the pitch back up so the microtones uh, we're just adding or removing a couple fingers um, just to get a slightly different pitch. Now, these aren't going to be perfectly in tune. It's very difficult unless you spend a lot of time uh, sitting there with a tuner. So that was just spanning from an E flat to an F. Uh, just a normal chromatic scale might sound something like so. I hope that's given you a little bit of insight into the bassoon. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting with you all, and I hope everyone is staying safe out there. So until next time, I'll see you later.